What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about what's going on with SPY and Tesla and the QQQ in NVIDIA and break down many different stocks out there and break down what the technicals are telling us and what's going on with the debt ceiling right now as the house is about to vote very soon on whether or not they're going to pass this agreement. And before I break anything down about the debt ceiling, before I talk about what's going on with many different stocks out there, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below. You can deposit any amount of money into the account, whether it's $1 or $100, it's up to you. You are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $3,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla or NVIDIA share. The offer ends very, very soon in just about 11 hours. So check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. All right, so when it comes to the market, SPY is down about 0.55% for the day. Going into my video from yesterday, I told you all that the market was likely developing a head and shoulders like formation on SPY, right? We had this head forming, uh, we had this left shoulder, and I was talking about how a potential right shoulder could form in the pre-market and i was anticipating a sell-off to come for the markets my target on spy was uh 415 to 416 if we broke below 417.5 and i believe the odds heavily favored that i also mentioned to you guys it's important to watch for confirmation and i was saying all of this back when spy was in the 420s yesterday right we closed at 420 or just above it and i was talking about some potential downside now in my video from yesterday i told you guys that we, we got some uh, bearish signals right here I said the same thing in the morning that the market would likely drop but then i mentioned to you guys that we had another catalyst and that is the dead ceiling and then the dead ceiling could cause the market to pump later on but before it happened we'd likely see some downside i also told you guys that the dead ceiling vote would happen after the market closed so i wasn't too sure about you know holding profits or anything like that even though i'm not giving financial advice by the way but <laughs> anyways that's kind of funny uh this is important because then i had i made another video later on during the uh, intraday time frame and I broke down the debt ceiling and I mentioned we got some bullish things coming up from Biden uh, from McCarthy from McHenry and all these different speakers also the Fed speakers said some bullish things and I told you guys the market was likely trying to rebound a bit and then the market you know this is very close to when it was bouncing and I told you guys uh, we'd be watching this 418 area and this resistance right around i think it was either the 30 minute or the one hour time frame so the 30 minute resistance at the 50 ema so like right here and that is where we got projected this is the resistance i was talking about and this is where the market ended up closing very close uh right above the 200 ema on the 30 minute time frame so the question is what's going to happen to the market moving forward what levels do you have to watch for and honestly guys i'm not 100 percent sure because this will depend heavily on the debt ceiling and just right now just a couple of minutes ago from the time i'm recording this uh i just read it that the u.s house has approved a measure to begin the one hour debate on the debt ceiling bill ahead of an evening vote on the passage what this means is okay biden and mccarthy had the agreement the house needs to vote on the agreement all right before they pass it to the senate mitch mcconnell came out and he said that we could get the House passing it as soon as today, passing it to the Senate by tomorrow. Right? McCarthy said the same thing. He's very optimistic. Patrick McHenry, make Henry, excuse me, said the same thing too. And overall, we're getting some very optimistic feedback from many different individuals. Biden said some bullish things. He said that, you know, they're making a ton of progress. They're going to get it done. There's nothing to worry about in his opinion. And as a result, the market liked that. And then we got some Fed speakers like Jefferson saying that the Fed may pause very soon. The market just continued to love it as well. So these bullish things came. Was the TA correct? The answer is yes, but the TA cannot predict everything perfectly. Okay, and this is something I want everyone to know. TA alone is not sufficient, okay? Because it's kind of like building a bridge with only concrete and uh water and you know certain products you need more and more information about uh what's going on with the environment right you need more information about the news the context to get a full picture of the market but ta technical analysis tends to be accurate uh for the most part but it's not perfect right it's not sufficient and that's the reason why it could call lots of big moves just like i was telling you guys we're going to see some downside from a ta perspective and that's what happened into the morning today 
But TA would, did not like tell me yesterday we would just bounce in the middle of the day like this. I couldn't really foresee this because this depended on the news. And the news affects us as well, which is why I like to give you guys many updates throughout the day. Uh, during the middle of the day, sometimes, and typically I will be speaking before the market opens and then after the market opens in this video like this, just to give you guys as many updates as I can. All right, so I want to make that as clear as possible. TA does work. Technical analysis does work. It's just not completely sufficient. The news can also help you, but it's also not sufficient. You have to look at both TA and the news. Now, anyways, when it comes to the markets, let me just mention that we have some tech earnings coming out. Uh, some uh, tech earnings like Dell, we have Dell coming out, ChargePoint, and then we have Macy's coming out for tomorrow. Those are going to be very important uh, for the market. At least those are the bigger earnings for the week, Dell especially. Uh, for the data, we have initial jobless claims coming out one hour before the market opens. Uh, then after that, we have the PMI report 30 minutes after open. Uh, another PMI manufacturing report for the S&P that's coming out. 15 minutes after open so for the first 15 minutes of the day we have lots of volatility coming first 30 minutes and then for the first hour we have some natural gas data coming out uh, crude oil data too after another hour but that's not as impactful so lots of big data for the first hour to hour and a half of the market open make sure you're ready for that and finally i just want to add something very interesting look at the options chain on spy i noticed something very interesting here the put to call ratio, whoops, the put to call ratio right here is 3.05 for Friday. This is the highest put to call ratio in all of June. Plus, we have almost 1.3 million puts expiring on Friday. That's very significant. And that's hinting in the direction that the market may have something big in store. I'm expecting a big move for Friday. We could see the market get a big rug pull if the shorts fight back. Or we could see another massive short squeeze, just like what we saw last Friday. It's very hard to predict because it depends on what happens with the debt ceiling, in my opinion. So we'd have to be very careful, okay? But we'd have to watch for confirmation and watch certain levels to get a better understanding of how this is going to play out. But when there are this many puts, let me just note, the odds do favor market makers trying to get the market to squeeze. That's more likely. But I'm not as fixated on this notion as I was last week until we get more confirmation, until I get more information about the debt ceiling and things like that. All right, so I just want to keep this in the back of your mind for the time being. This is very significant. And as for the debt ceiling, we're just waiting for what the house is going to do in a couple of hours from now. Be ready for this. Expect a big move for the markets. Now, Tesla did a lot of what I predicted, but at the end of the day, it got a massive pump. And I didn't really see that coming from a TA perspective. Uh, in the very beginning because some big news came out involving elon musk who's in shanghai or very close to shanghai i think he was in beijing yesterday now he's going to be approaching shanghai soon and he's going to approach the shanghai Giga factory if anything and he's going to be showing off the new model 3. so this news came out and tesla just ripped off of this this was very very awesome for many people to hear because this could help boost their sales like crazy and that's a good sign for tesla good sign for the company as a whole and that's why Tesla managed to close green. Now let's break down these charts. What am I seeing for now? Well, there's a bullish and bearish case. And I don't truly know which one's going to play out exactly. Because it depends on what happens with the debt ceiling and how the market interprets it. That's why it's very important to watch price levels, unfortunately. And I say this because, look, I, I can't always predict the future perfectly. I don't know what's going to happen with the debt ceiling exactly. I don't know if the house is going to give us the vote today or delay it another day or so. I just don't truly know. I'm leaning more towards them giving us uh, a pass of the deal. And there's both a bullish and bearish case we could look at. And I'd have to see how the market moves in real time to give you guys a much more accurate forecast. But for now, I mean, you could argue that there's a bullish divergence here that developed on SPY. It really depends on if this bottom holds on the 30 minute time frame. And then same thing on our MACD or MACD. Bullish divergence has developed, so there's a good chance we could try to keep going to the upside. But we need more confirmation first because SPY did fail to break the 30 minute uh, 50 EMA. So if we're bullish after the debt ceiling tomorrow, <laughs> if the bullish outcome ends up playing out, we need to see SPY break and hold 418.5. If it does so, it's going to make its way. It has to hold this level where the 50 EMA is. Break and hold that. And it's going to fly to 420. In my opinion, we have to hold it. We can't just like, you know, we can't just go above it temporarily. 
and then just come right back down. We have to break and hold it. On the four hour time frame, we're still looking a little bit bearish. We're not looking the strongest just yet. So we have to wait for confirmation. I also want to add that on the 30 minute time frame, our major support we're going to be watching is around this 417.3 area. If it breaks below this, it has the potential to retest 417, then the 416s again. We could even break our low of the day if that ends up breaking. So make sure you watch your 30 minute time frame and watch the 50 and 200 EMAs. Those are some very important support and resistance levels. If we break the low of the day we made today, all the way down to 416, we're going to come dropping down to the 415 flat area. Okay, so watch all of these different levels tomorrow. Uh, it depends on the debt ceiling. I, I don't know exactly how it's going to play out. I want to remain open-minded. And that's the reason why I told you guys in my intraday video, uh, I can't give financial advice, okay? I, I really can't tell you to do anything. But here's what I'm saying. I warned you guys that, you know, this event is very capricious. Uh, I don't truly know what they're going to do. And I, I think I have an idea of what they're going to do, but I don't know for sure. That's why I secured all profits. I'm not really holding anything on my trading accounts just yet. Uh, I'm just holding cash, sitting on cash, just waiting. And I'm going to be scalping tomorrow, looking for more opportunities. I'm going to hunt and not chase in the process of doing so. All right. That's what I'm seeing. Make sure you watch those levels. Now, if Elon Musk does present the Tesla new model and Tesla does see this inverse head and shoulders play out, there is that unfilled gap around this 207 area. Tesla needs to break and hold 205. If it does that, we're going to see 207, then potentially the 210s if it continues to break out, thanks to this Elon Musk catalyst. But there is one issue with Tesla, and it is forming a bearish divergence right here. We have a double bearish divergence. If it breaks this high, it could form a triple bearish divergence, which means that even if Tesla pumps all the way up to like the 210s, it could get a big rug pull later on from there. Now, I am speaking a little bit ahead of myself for talking about that, but let me just note that you have to be careful and watch for those confirmation levels. Tesla has resistance around, it's a very strange level of resistance. It's between 205 and 204, basically. Basically, around this zone, Tesla is going to have some resistance and struggle to break it. It's not going to be an easy level to break. Uh, the resistance is tough around this zone. I do believe Tesla has the potential to break it if Elon Musk causes enough hype with the Model 3. And Elon Musk has a lot of power, right? He can help this company big time with the advertising and getting a lot more sales. Now, if Tesla breaks down, you're going to be watching this classic uh, resistance that's going to become support around this 200 point, 200.5 zone, like around there. That's where I'm going to be watching the next major support if it does end up breaking down, right? Right here. And if that fails on us, then we're going to be watching the 30 minutes uh, 50 EMA at 198, around the 198 zone. If that fails, then there's 195, all the way down to 195. So those are your support zones. And then the resistance is going to be around 204 to 205, followed by 207, then the 210s, right? There's a lot of room for Tesla to try to continue pushing. You could even get all the way up to 212. I mean, that would be a stretch, but it is very possible too. Now, where am I leaning towards Tesla? Well, it's going to depend on the debt ceiling too, right? What happens with the debt ceiling? That's going to affect Tesla and the whole market. Tesla will have an extra boost if the market does pump thanks to the debt ceiling, thanks to the house. If not, it could slow Tesla down a little bit in the morning. But if Elon Musk truly does present the Model 3, as the reports are saying, if he shows off the new Model 3, we could see Tesla pump even more. The odds are greatly favoring that. But I'm going to remain open-minded nonetheless. And I think it's very important to do that because remember, even if Tesla pumps more, you can make money on the process of this pump, but you have to be careful because there is a bearish divergence in the process of developing. I'm saying that in the process of developing, that does not mean it's fully developed yet. That does not mean Tesla is going to tank just yet. Okay. It just means that it's risky. If Tesla pumps very hard, it's a little bit risky to be buying way up there. And you have to be very careful depending on how the market reacts after the whole debt ceiling deal is completely passed and done. Okay. So watch support and resistance for the QQQ. If we're bullish on the QQQ, it has to break the 50 EMA above 348.4. If it breaks that, it could fly all the way up to about 350 flat, and then fill this gap around the mid 350s to pump, pump even higher. If we're bearish, it's going to be testing, I think on the one hour time frame. I'm not sure what, if it's not showing. Wait, what happened here? 
So anyways, basically it's where this support is around this three, four, six level. Something's a little bit off here because it was showing me support not too long ago. Uh, something's a little bit off. It doesn't really matter though. Basically look at the low of the day. So you can look at the 15 minute time frame. I think it's still showing it. Uh, watch this support right here at 346.5 where the 200 EMA happens to be. And if it fails there, then it's going to fall all the way down to 345. But if that doesn't happen, right, it's likely going to uh, just remain sandwiched and then react to the dead ceiling, just like many of these other stocks. For NEO, we have some big news. They have deliveries coming out very soon. It's already June 1st in China. So for the month of May, deliveries are coming out. I'm expecting a big move by NEO. There is a bullish divergence developing on the hourly and the 30 minute time frames. So there's a chance Neil could get a bounce, but I'm not really guaranteeing it, right? It depends on their numbers. That's going to be even more important than just the technicals. For the NASDAQ, uh, this in turn came down and tried to bounce a little bit. It didn't really test the 50 EMA. There is a chance it could still do that, but it will depend on the dead ceiling. It's still looking a little bit more bearish on the one hour time frame. It's not looking like it's ready to bounce yet, but this could change depending on the dead ceiling. So remain very, very uh, open minded with this. If it's bullish, we could get closer to 13,000 plus, 13,058. If we're bearish, it's going to break below uh, the low of the day, basically, and retest the 50 EMA. So you're going to have to watch those levels carefully. If SPX is bullish, 4,200 is going to come, and it's going to fill this gap all the way up to the 4,200 plus area. If we're bearish, it's going to break down to where this imbalance zone is, to uh, 4,157, and then it could break down even lower, uh, to retest the 200 EMA on the one hour time frame to 4140, uh, was that 4140? Sorry about that. 4140. If it does break below this imbalance level, where am I leaning towards? I mean, I'm in the middle, guys. It really depends on the dead ceiling. There's a good chance it can try to fill this gap, but we have to just wait and see. Watch for confirmation. The VIX is only up 2.75%. Uh, it had this, you know, uh, inverse head and shoulders that I was talking about, like right here. And this did play out, right? Going into the day, we got a nice, pump today i did talk about this yesterday and then the vix came down and pumped again so very very volatile not really doing anything too significant it is trending around uh where this previous resistance was for the wedge for now not too much is going on with it the dollar is a little bit up pumping a bit that tends to be a bearish signal for the markets but if the dollar gets a rejection because it is it has this uh, bearish divergence that developed in, on the hourly time frame if it does continue to play out and drop, that could be a bullish signal for the markets. Uh, Coinbase, 62 came. Uh, it performed very, very well for now. Uh, it cooled off, and it's likely going to get a retest of 60. It still is getting rejected off this resistance, so not a whole lot is going on. But that's just a technical standpoint. If we get the dead ceiling news, that's very good. We could see Coinbase continuing to pump to 65. I would still be very careful with it. Apple hit uh this zone right here came very close to about 180 then it got a big rejection is currently at about 177 it looks to me like it could still cool off a little bit more and retest the 50 but for now we're just going to wait on the dead ceiling if it's a good piece of news and the market pumps we could see apple retest 180 if it's not too good apple can make its way down to fill this gap down to 175 for NVIDIA, I predicted NVIDIA would come down to 390. Instead, it's at 378. Next major level is going to be 375. It might get a double bottom there and then try to balance from there. And it's forming a bullish divergence for now. So I could see it drop a little bit more than try to balance. It is quite oversold or very close to oversold territory, especially after what Kathy would said. She said NVIDIA is a little bit overvalued uh, in her opinion. And with that said, I mean, that was very negative for its performance. For Google, I warned you guys of some potential downside, and that is what happened to Google. Uh, we're going to be watching this imbalance right here. That's exactly where the 200 happens to be on the hourly. Uh, there's no clear sign of a bounce just yet, so it could revisit around like the 122 level, maybe a little bit lower, and then try to bounce. Or if the dead ceiling causes the bounce early, it could bounce a little bit earlier. If it does balance, we're going to be watching resistance at 124.42 break above that and we could see 125 and then it get closer to 127 after that but that's going to depend on the dead ceiling we'll see what happens with the news for amazon if we get a good piece of news for the dead ceiling amazon's going to pump for 122.9 maybe get closer to 123 plus and then if it breaks that it's going to make its way up to 125 
For bearish on Amazon, it's going to come all the way down to this imbalance, all the way back down to this 116 area if it does get a big rejection. For now, it has a head and shoulders and it did come down, but it didn't drop as hard as I thought it would, but overall it is still red as I predicted. So now what am I seeing for Amazon? Well, we're about to get a curl right here on the hourly time frame on the PPO. So there's a chance it could try to remain resilient. So we'll just be patient with Amazon, see how it reacts to the debt ceiling. For Meta, it's very suspicious. This is a very suspicious stock now. The technical setup looked pretty good. And I told you guys Meta would likely cool off just a little bit. Uh, we came down very close to this 260. We touched the EMA right here, which I predicted. And then we got a small bounce and actually closed a little bit better than I predicted, a little bit green. So here's the thing. Yes, Meta is holding up. And if the market pumps more, Meta could make its way back up to the high it made a couple of days ago to 269. If we're bearish on Meta, it's going to retest 260. If that fails us, it could retest 256. This all depends on the debt ceiling. But here's the thing that's sketchy about Meta. I was looking at many big orders that came out and there are massive, massive whales, a bunch of them, right? So many massive orders against Meta, betting that Meta is going to get a huge rug pull by June. And uh, I don't know why. I don't know if they know something. I don't really know. I find it very suspicious. So I would be careful with this. And they seem very confident something's about to happen to Meta uh, over the next two to three weeks. Who knows what it's going to be? Who knows if they're correct? I don't truly know. Okay. Uh, but I find that very suspicious and a little bit, uh, it's very, it's very leery in a way, you know, it's very leery. Uh, if anything, just look at the levels I talked about. And once again, guys, uh, I don't know how this is going to play out. I mean, the technicals are looking a little bit more bullish, maybe a tiny bit more bullish looking at this MACD and all that, but I'm not too fixated on anything. It really depends on what these congressional members are doing. What is the house doing? Are they going to cause the market to pump or not? You have to watch the levels for confirmation. I know it's one of those days you don't want to hear this. You want to know, like, what's going to happen this time? I'm sorry, guys. I mean, I'll do my best to talk more about this tomorrow morning. But we have to be patient. We have to watch these levels very, very carefully. It's best for me to repeat this as much as possible to just get this in as many people's heads as possible. All right? So thank you all for listening. One good performer could be Tesla with Elon Musk you know, in China right now. Something good could come to this. The stock is showing some strength right now. So be on the lookout and do what you have to do. Uh, thank you all for listening. Have a great day. Get ready for the debt ceiling news. Something big is coming. And if they do pass it, if the debt ceiling is passed by the House, it's going to pass on to the Senate very, very soon. And I'm hoping they do that because this will affect the livelihoods of everyone. And it's very, very important for every single American. All right. Thank you for listening. Don't forget about the Weeble link. The offer ends in just a couple of hours and just nine hours from now. And also don't forget about the merch I have. If you want to buy a shirt, a tank top, a hoodie, or something like that that says to the moon, or buy the dip, or something like that, you could find all of these in the comment section. It's your choice, of course. I'm not forcing you. I would really appreciate it, though, if you do. All right. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Market to the moon is the long term. is very bright. And peace out.